Are you a fan of horror? Are you someone looking for a thrill? Are you a fan of achievements? Then maybe this game is for you. Let's talk about Dread Out 2. Dread Out 2 begins with the quote, Some old cultures believed that photographs can steal a person's soul and disrespects the spiritual world. This quote establishes your main defense against the evil around you your phone's camera, which acts as both your flashlight and weapon. An engaging system of combat when you do not have a legitimate weapon like an axe or knife to protect you. When all you have is your phone, the combat system forces tension and makes combat engagement slow and difficult, causing you to move with caution and purpose. A system which is both frustrating and yet simple, perfect for a horror game. Now, this is an achievement review, so we will discuss what you can expect as a completionist in a moment, but first, I want to address the good and the bad of this game, from the standpoint of just normally trying to play it. First off, the bad. The game has some severe immersion breaking issues. There is constant pop-in that is hard to ignore, like completely cannot be ignored. There are constant freezes when interacting with NPCs or making progression so that the game can load the next section, which is completely appalling for a title which is meant to be optimized for the Xbox Series X. The combat system is also not refined enough to warrant the quick gameplay found in this game. This may be done in an effort to make the game harder and therefore scare you further away from combat engagements but when the only manner that I can damage a level's boss is by getting upskirt shots because the pixel specific angle I need on the enemy's hitbox is at that exact spot, something is wrong. There is a certain level of patience with horror games being difficult in this manner, but when I cannot turn my camera fast enough to properly defend myself or I need to line up a pixel perfect shot in a fast paced fight, that is when the game shows its cracks. I am looking at you act number 5. But honestly, with all of that being said, those are all the negatives I have to say. The gameplay in Dread Out 2 can use some refinement for sure, but it is a game that shows great potential. The good parts of the game would most definitely be the moments of horror and fear. The mood throughout the whole game is honestly extremely well done and while playing I feel spooked out and unnerved. When I go through hallways I feel like anything could jump out at me at any point. I was truly scared when I played this game for the first time. Throughout all levels, I did not know what to expect, and honestly, that is appreciated by me. This game shines when you have no weapon to protect you. I felt more confident and secure when I had an axe or a knife, so when all that you have is your phone against the ghosts that surround you, it is truly terrifying. You feel restricted and weak, almost as if you are at the will of the enemies coming for you, which further speaks to the mood that this game has established. The puzzles you come across in the game's levels are very intriguing, not too difficult, but not so in your face all the time like the solution is right there for you. You know what I mean? One puzzle which I am still perplexed by is in Act 3, Mirror. I don't even know if this is a puzzle, but it is one where you need to navigate through Linda's home. I will not spoil it as it was quite a fun moment for me to have experienced, but it involved a glitch in the game. I ran into an issue where an event was not triggering even though I was doing the correct thing for the past 5 minutes. So I decided to reload my checkpoint and do the exact same thing again. This time, it worked, and there was a jump scare which I will remember for years to come. I have never been more terrified than I was at that moment. The fact that I had previously been looking at this spot and nothing happened, yet now I get the jump scare that was meant to take place, had me questioning if the glitch wasn't a glitch, and was more of a necessary solution to the puzzle. I'm sitting here thinking that no developer would rightfully make a puzzle which required you to reload the checkpoint. But a part of me wants to believe that this was intentional, as it enhanced the level of fear I had in the moment. The fact that I had stared at this spot mere moments ago with nothing wrong made me so scared of what was to come. Intentional or not, this was a fantastic moment for me in an already scary and disturbing game, which just upped my level of fear higher than it had ever been before. Check out the video I am linking on the top right as a card right about now if you are interested in seeing my reaction to this moment. I would highly recommend that video as I was embarrassingly terrified at the moment it took place. It's one of my favorite videos in recent memory, that is for sure. Now that I have given a brief review of what the game has to offer, let's get into what I'm here to talk about. The Achievements As an overview, for you to unlock all of the achievements in this game, you will need to do the following. Complete the story which contains 7 acts total. You will need to complete the 2 side quests found within the game. You will need to interact with all of the ghost NPCs. You will need to visit all locations in the game, and you will need to complete all of the Ghostpedia entries, 
which really is just basically killing all of the ghost types. And then finally, you will need to find all of the urban legends within the game. And of course, there are miscellaneous tasks like stunning a few ghosts and backstabbing like three ghosts. Those aren't anything to write home about. They're nothing crazy. You will get them for sure. Let's be honest. But uh, those are all of the tasks that you need to complete to get all of the achievements in this game. This is truly not an intimidating list of activities. Standing at only 15 total achievements rewarding you with 1000 gamer score, you can expect to complete this game in around 10 hours. For me, I completed the game in 10 hours and 25 minutes, so that estimate will more than likely remain accurate for you. With the previous mentioned list of activities, you will not have too much to do or watch out for even. You will not chapter select upon completion of the game, so you do not need to worry about missing out on any achievements, but of course, it is within one's nature to be as efficient as possible. So as long as you navigate with curiosity in mind and you speak to any ghosts that you come across, you will complete the game with a minimal mop up left to do. For those curious, Act 5 is the last chance you have to complete everything. If you progress too far into the story, you will need to complete the game to return to the beginning of Chapter 5 to mop up any remaining achievements. For me, the achievements I had to mop up incidentally ended up being my favorite achievements. So let's talk about Don't Trust the Devil and Inquisitor Experevit. I think that's how you pronounce it. My bad if I got that second one wrong. <laughs> Anyways, first up for discussion is Don't Trust the Devil. To unlock this achievement, you need to complete the side quest, The Bloody Love Story. To initiate the side quest, you have to locate a group of students discussing something spooky going on at school. Listening in on their conversation has Linda curious, so you get to decide if you want to join them on their adventure at midnight. I of course did, as I wanted the achievement. So joining in on this quest, you begin to learn about what's going on. There is a ghost you find in a classroom scribbling on a desk. You walk into the classroom and she is gone. You inspect the desk and see what appears to be a romantic scribbling of a pair of initials. This ghost was previously a student in love, yet their love was not requited. I will not continue on with spoiling the story of this quest as I personally believe you should experience it firsthand. It is not extremely deep at surface level, but it is poetic if you begin to look into its meaning. The reason it is one of my favorite achievements is because, first off, it was my final achievement to complete the game, but more than that, this quest was one that oddly unnerved me, to a degree that is difficult to explain. Yes, the majority of the game was scary and disturbing, but this quest remains in my mind. The image of this ghost sticks in my head, sending chills down my spine. I cannot explain why, maybe because the quest takes place in a relatable location like a school, or maybe because this ghost is so human to begin with, or maybe simply because I'm a real scaredy cat when it comes to this kind of imagery, I don't know. I just know that this specific quest and therefore this achievement remains prominently in my mind whenever I think of this game, and so I believe that it deserves a degree of discussion. Now with that spooky achievement out of the way, let's talk about a fairly disturbing one, Inquisitor Exparavit. Once again, sorry if I got that mistakenly pronounced, my bad. Anyways, this is my personal favorite achievement from this game. This achievement asks you to complete all of Mona's urban legends. Now, this is simply put a collectible achievement. You need to locate 11 different urban legends around the game. Just like the bloody love story, if you look at this at face value, you won't think too much of it. But if you take a second to read into the legends whenever you find one, you'll see there's something more. All 11 of the legends required for this achievement are based around legitimate Indonesian legends. For real, all the stories and legends you locate for this achievement are based on real life. The reason this stands out to me is because when you game, you remove yourself from reality, you don't feel weird about violence, and you don't get entirely disturbed by what is on screen. Because nobody would do that in real life, right? Well, these urban legends shove reality back in your face. Yes, some of them are discussing supernatural entities, it is up to you if you believe in that kind of thing, but some legends discuss real people, committing real acts of violence and assault. Real legends around Indonesia that people know of in real life. You see, what sticks out to me about this achievement is the realness that comes from it. It is not a collection of legends or myths made up by the writers for this game. It is a collection of legends that people in parts of Indonesia know of and have potentially experienced themselves. This achievement and therefore this game is a real connection to the stories of Indonesia. It is a connection to the people there. It is more than an achievement. That is only if you allow it the chance to be more. Dread Out 2 is a game that intrigues me. It has the potential for refinement and would benefit from updates in the future, yet that does not bother me. 
The moments of horror and the gameplay experiences found within the game were enjoyable and engaging. 10 hours, 15 achievements, and a thousand gamer score later, I do not feel as though my time was wasted. In fact, I feel as though this game is the perfect choice for anyone looking for an engaging horror title and a fairly straightforward achievement list. This game is one I would recommend to anyone, whether they be a completionist like me or just an average gamer looking for an engaging experience. Dreado 2 is for the fans of horror looking for a unique experience and as long as you come in with an open mind, I can promise you that you will not be disappointed. Alright, and that is the end of the video. Please drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Stick around and subscribe for more content from me, including reviews, playthroughs, and guides. If you're interested in this game even more, I do have a full playthrough on my channel. I'll link the playlist as a card, and I will also link the highlights video as another card if you are looking for a compact video to experience the best of what my playthrough has to offer. And with all of that being said, I deeply appreciate you watching this video. If you have made it to this point in the video, please drop a comment letting me know where you found my channel and what made you stick around. It is really great for me to hear that information and also helps me understand if I should be focusing my content on specific things. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, everybody.